Is Linux any good on the desktop in 2024? I've often seen people complaining about it all the time, like it wastes your time, or I don't want to compile my kernel every single week, or it doesn't play the games that I want to play. But my experience so far has been really, really great. My results have been fantastic. I'm using it right now, in fact, to record this video, and overall, Windows can just suck my but first, why did I move to Linux? In short, Windows 10 was actually able to draw out my entire reserves of patience and eventually just completely broke me. One of the biggest things about Windows, Windows 10, Windows 11, definitely more so in Windows 11, was the telemetry. My God, just the amount of stuff that they would do to just get as much information out of you as possible. Just everything was being... Uh, I just felt like I was an NSA experiment. And the AI integration as well. Why, who wants that? Who wants that stuff embedded into their desktop? The whole Windows recall thing? Hello, like why did anyone at Microsoft think that that was a good idea at all? But also experienced data loss and just a whole, just a whole system and its performance just degrading more and more as time went on. And I don't know whether that's something I'm doing wrong, but really I'm just using it as a desktop. I mean, so I moved to Linux and in this video, I want to talk about what that experience has been like and why I think that Linux is perfect for the desktop in 2024. To be clear, I've been using Linux for quite some time though, since 1996 in fact, and so I'm no ordinary user. When it comes to problems with drivers and the kernel and other things like bugs a bit more deeper in the system, they don't really concern me too much as I've sort of got the skills to sort of work around them and try to understand what's going on. And these are important things to mention because my experience with Linux is going to be one where I can overcome any frustrations that I face, whereas your average desktop user might actually, in fairness to the whole Linux on the desktop thing, might actually struggle with even some simple bugs that they're not seeing on Windows. But anyway, let's talk about why I selected Kubuntu. Kubuntu 2404, to be precise, which ships with KDE Plasma 5.27 at the time that I installed it anyway. For me, KDE Plasma has been absolutely phenomenal. It's made, it's essentially underpinned my entire experience here on Linux. It's made everything just work and glue and sit together really, really well. I've been really impressed with its flexibility, but also its stability at the same time. In fact, I've been so impressed with one key feature, and that's that I've not even so much as installed a graphics driver at all on this desktop. Literally, I've not been to the AMD website at all. I've not downloaded any AMD software. I did no compilation of any drivers. I just installed Kubuntu, and that was it. I got KDE Plasma, and I got the driver, the graphics driver, Navi, compiled straight into the kernel. I was playing games from day one. But when I came into this, what support did I need from my Linux distribution? Whichever I picked, what were the things that I needed support with? Well, first and foremost, I have an ultra wide monitor right in front of me here, 49 inches and 120 hertz refresh rate. So not exactly your average monitor, there's a few of them out there, but it is still a relatively niche market. I have an AMD GPU, but I knew that that would be supported pretty well because I've always known that AMD has been pretty good with their drivers on Linux, much better than Nvidia. I have Elgato hardware as well, quite a bit, few bits and bobs here and there, but one of the primary ones that I needed support for is the PCI card that I have inside of the system for capturing HDMI input from external devices. You also need to be able to do basic video editing. Obviously, you're watching a video right now and obviously I have to edit it, so that was obviously something I needed the distribution to support, but that's mainly, I guess, the software ecosystem within Linux, but at the same time, I still need the software to be stable and I need the window manager to be stable as well. And finally, a bit of gaming, so a bit of support for some simple games. I was very big and still am relatively invested in EVE Online, which I was playing on Windows, obviously just fine, because it's the primary gaming platform. However, when I then came over to Linux, I needed that to be supported well too. Oh, and of course, finally, finally, programming. Obviously, that's my day job. I'm a DevOps engineer. Oh, that might be changing soon, but I'll let you know, keep you updated on that. However, of course, I need to be able to program. We'll talk more about what I'm doing in a little bit later in the video, but that's a pretty much a given, really. 
but I didn't really expect there to be any issues here, as a lot of people I've spoken to that do a lot of programming on Linux would never do programming on anything else other than Linux. Right, but let's talk about what support I actually got from Linux. So that's everything that I need support with when I was going in, but how's the experience been? And what have I actually managed to get support for? Well, actually everything, everything apart from the Elgato hardware, that was the only thing that I couldn't find drivers for, but I knew that going in. It's worth noting too that gaming has been really, really surprisingly quite good on this setup. I've been playing quite a few games. I've been trying quite a few games. Cyberpunk worked really, really well. EVE Online's been great. X4 Foundations, Elite Dangerous. These have all been absolutely fantastic. They've played flawlessly. Now, I'm not gonna try and whitewash it and say it has been perfect. There were a few times when, I do remember once I booted up X4 Foundations and it tried to load the level and it just crashed. And the same with, it, with Elite as well. I was parked on a planet or a moon, I think, and the system just crashed when I tried to render everything. Okay, it happened, but it only ever happened once. I've never seen it since then, and it's been several weeks now. So, who knows? Maybe that was just an issue within Proton itself, or maybe something outside the game caused that crash. But other than that, it's been really, really good. Oh, and by the way, I actually got some extras when I moved over to Linux. Little extra features that are much easier to do on Linux than they are on Windows, and in some cases, they're just not even possible to do on Windows. Other things was like easy RAID 1 device management. I could just use MD to create a multi-disc array, a RAID 1 array with two SSDs, which I then mounted my documents folder on, so then when I'm writing to that, I'm getting a copy of that data, which I can then back up off-site easily enough, and I've got a little bit of hardware redundancy there for those files, which are really important to me, my Git repositories, video editing, and so on and so forth. I'm using TimeShift to do my desktop backups as well. Really, really simple. Just uses rsync in the background. It's an interface to it. You boot it up, you give it root access. It does need root access because it's going to be reading the whole file system. And you say, hey, back that up and put it over there. And you can tell it when. You can have dailies, weeklies, monthlies, and so on and so forth. And so that has just been ticking away really, really nicely in the background. And that's that. And vastly superior file system performance. I had lots of issues in Windows. One of the biggest ones was a directory with just slightly too many files in it, specifically video files. And Explorer would come to a grind and hold for at least a minute or two. It was crazy. I don't understand. Well, I sort of get what it's doing. It's probably trying to read the metadata from the files and load up Kodak information and the audio encoding and the length of the video and so on and so forth. So if there's a hundred videos in there, okay, sure. But Linux doesn't have that issue. It loads the directory pretty much instantly. And Microsoft have had 30 years to do this. They've been operating for a long time now. Why hasn't that been solved? Okay, so day to day, what am I doing on Linux? Well, one of the main things I've been doing is building a hardware appliance based on Proxmox. What it's meant for me is that Linux as a daily driver has meant that I've been using VS Code, Golang, Python, C, Terraform. So doing a bit of DevOpsy stuff there, writing software and so on and so forth for that appliance and for Proxmox in order to automate it and back it up and do things like that. So Linux has been my daily driver for that for at least a couple of months now. Outside of that, really, it's just been my standard daily driver doing the tasks that you would do as a non-power user watching YouTube. I use FreeTube myself. I've been trying the Brave browser as of late. I've been using Obsidian to practice with notes and scripting for YouTube videos. I've also been playing around with the JetBrains IDEs to replace VS Code, as I think that's just something lacking there in VS Code. And it turns out that the JetBrain IDEs are actually really, really good. They're actually really nice, and I think that they're going to be worth paying for, in fact. So perhaps I'll do a, a video on that in the future. But really, I'm not doing anything exotic or unique or over the top that you as a, as a non-power user or even indeed as a power user might be doing yourself. Sure, I've got Docker installed, I'm using Zoom, I've got OBS, but they're not really that taxing on the system. And so I'm not really doing anything exotic. I'm just using it as a daily computer, just like anyone else would. At this point, a good question would be, have I seen any issues with the whole setup, with Linux, with KDE and with just the whole thing in general with my specific mix of hardware or even just general problems that I've got nothing really to do with the hardware and might actually be at the software level. Yes, absolutely, I have seen issues. I've seen the occasional crash from time to time. 
and I'm using OBS right now to record this video. It's working perfectly now, but I was seeing this strange muxer issue, which I never ever saw on Windows. So I'd use the default settings, I'd hit record, and after anywhere between 10 to 120 seconds, OBS would fail with an error saying it couldn't find a muxer. So I did a bit of research, and in the end, I just ended up going to custom FFmpeg settings, and that has now resolved it, obviously, because I'm recording the video right now, which you're watching. And although I have banged on about how great the gaming's been, yeah, of course, there's been some games that I miss that I can't play on Linux. Hell Let Loose, for example, is a great World War II game. However, the anti-cheat is where Linux will let you down. So it seems like things like Battle Eye and things like that, they seem to pick up Linux as a false flag and some of the things that are running in the background on a Linux system seem to trigger the anti-cheat and unfortunately it doesn't work very well and you probably get kicked or banned from those games so maybe not worth trying but yeah not every game works but definitely the games that I've been playing most certainly work and in some cases they probably actually work a little bit better than Windows. And I did have the occasional system lockup as well. I wasn't quite sure what caused this. One theory I had was I was trying Vivaldi, the browser, to closed source browser. However, I have since moved to Brave and I'm not seeing those issues anymore. So I don't know whether it was Vivaldi experiencing a memory leak perhaps, whether it was something trying to interact with Vivaldi that was causing problems, but it would cause the system to lock up and I'd have to hard reboot it. But I'm not seeing them anymore since switching to Brave. The stability has sort of leveled out and maybe that's been resolved or maybe I'll see another crash in the future. Okay, so what now? Well, for you, I'd recommend going out and trying Linux. And as Kubuntu seems to be working really, really well for me, 24.04, .04, maybe go ahead and give it a try. Make sure you're using relatively modern hardware and I think that you'd be pleasantly surprised. In the meantime, I guess I'll just keep using Linux. I mean, I have no intention of going back to Windows. I'm just going to have to make this work now. Not that I'm having to do much work to make it work. It's working really, really well. It's really, really nice. So I'll just keep going and I'll report any issues that I face. So Linux in 2024 on the desktop absolutely gets two thumbs up from me. See you next time.